Hi, Jason with ClockShark here. I'm going to give you a quick product demo of what the ClockShark software can do for you. So we're here at the website, clockshark.com, and I'm going to go ahead and log in up here on the top right corner. From here, you enter your email name and password and press log in. So the first thing most people do when they go to ClockShark is they either add a job or an employee. So let's start off with adding an employee. I want to go to the admin tab and I want to click employees. Here, we're going to press this green add employee button. Now I'm going to enter a name. If you enter or if you use employee IDs, you can enter that here. And then you can either choose between an email or a phone number. So let's go ahead and enter in an email address. And then we'll just add a temporary password that your employee can change when they get signed up. Additionally, you have a few other things you can choose. So we have the status here, which are either active or inactive. Active users count toward your bill, inactive users do not count toward your bill. So say you're getting set up on a Friday and you wanna add all your employees, but you don't want them going live until Monday, you can go ahead and switch them all to inactive. They won't count toward your bill until you switch them over to active. Um, and then you can choose for the role, either an employee or an administrator. Em employees have limited access that you get to choose and administrators have full access to the entire system. Additionally, you can add things like pay rates, um, overtime rules, and all sorts of other ones. The most commonly used settings for employees, though, are the enable GPS track, and then a lot of people like to use the require location services to clock in from the app. So with these two on in tandem, it makes it so that your employee has to share their location while they're on the clock. Um, a note, this is only while they're on the clock. If they're clocked off or on a break, the ClockShark app has no ability to track their location. So we'll go ahead and turn that one on. Um, there's a few other settings. If you want somebody to say, you know, be able to add a customer or a job or, you know, write a quote, you can tr turn them on here. Um, if you want them to be able to edit schedules or approve timesheets or even just view schedules, you can have turn those on here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll press create employee. Wonderful. And now that employee is created and we're going to go and add a job. So to add a job, you go to the work tab up top and click jobs. From here, we're going to go and click the add job button over in the top right. And then you can uh, simply just put in a job name. We'll go ahead and call this demo job. If you use job numbers, you can enter one here. You can choose the stage that the job is in. So if it's a new one, one that's in progress, or you can be scheduled, et cetera, it can all go there. If you like to color coordinate your jobs, you have that ability as well. Um, if this job is associated with a customer, you can choose this customer dropdown, and you can either choose one of your customers that you already have, or you can go ahead and create a new customer right there as well. Um, and then you can enter an address. So let's go ahead and just do 123 Main Street. Say it's here in Chico, California, where I am. And if you needed to add a description, you could do that too. And then let's go into the additional settings here. So we'll press additional settings. All righty, so it's gonna pop up these different settings. We're gonna turn on the GPS fence. So we'll check that box. And what this does is it creates a virtual fence around your job site which is really nice for both you and your employees. Um, these two check boxes are checked on and they are to remind your employees to clock in when they enter the fence. And if they have not clocked out before they exit the fence, it will send them a reminder to remind them to, hey, you forgot to clock out, don't forget to clock out. Um, so we'll leave that on. And then you can also restrict the access people have to this job. So say you, know, you only wanted yourself to have access to this job, you would make sure the access control was to allow only, and then you would just go in here and type in your name and you'd leave it for yourself. And then you would be the only person that would have access to this job. We'll go ahead and we'll uncheck that. 
so that everyone can have access to it. Additionally, too, if you wanted to uh, restrict what tasks can be associated with the job, you could check this box and allow only certain tasks to uh, be associated with the job. And one of the cooler features is the track labor budget. So let's say you know you wanted to work on this job and you know you only had 100 hours to work on it. Put in 100 hours here. And also, you want to be emailed when you're getting close to that 100 hour mark. You would check this email when budget hits box, and then you'd type in however many hours remaining. So say you want to be notified when there's only you know 10 hours left that you have budgeted for the job. Just type 10 in here, and then you'd press save, and you would automatically receive an email once there's only 10 hours left to work on this job. We'll go ahead and uncheck that box, and then we're just gonna press save. Next, let's add a task. So we're gonna go up to the work tab again, and we'll click tasks. And from here, you can go and press the green add task button in the right. And we'll go ahead and we'll type in demo task. And if you use task codes, you can enter them here. Again, you have the same sort of um, access control changes you can do. You can keep it as allow everyone, allow only, um, and you, know, you can choose who you want to have access to it. We're going to keep it as allow everyone though. Um, and then you can do certain things like make a task overtime exempt or out of bounds exempt. So say for instance, um, you know, you had a job where your employees get paid to travel there. This is where the out of bounds exempt comes in really handy. Um, you can have a task called travel and make it out of bounds exempt so that you know, your employees can clock into the job and then they can use the travel task and they won't get dinged for being outside of the jobs outside of the geofence because this task is out of bounds exempt. So let's go ahead and press save here. And another often used feature of Clockshark is our scheduler. So up at the time tab, the first one here is the schedules. And on our scheduler, you have a few ways to add different jobs. So let's say the most common one is our drag and drop feature. So we're going to grab that demo job we just created. And I want to drag it on over to my uh, employee here for tomorrow, Saturday, the 18th. I'll just drop it in. And now he is scheduled to work the demo job starting at 8 a.m. If you want to see more details on it, you can just click it. And you can see 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. demo job. You can even update the stage from here if need be. So say you wanted it to be ready to be scheduled, you could do that and have it right there. Another way to schedule someone, let's say we want Abe to be scheduled for a job on Saturday. You could also, instead of the drag and drop, you could click on that cell, choose the job. We'll say he's going to the clock shark party and we'll choose the task. We're gonna say he's going to be a helpful shark and then we will press add shift. Another cool one you can do is you can copy these shifts. So let's say he needs to work that on Sunday as well. We can go and click on the shift that we just created, press this copy icon, and then we will click the date and we'll just choose the 19th instead of this, the 18th and press copy shift. And now it's right there on the 19th as well. So with all of that, let's show you what clocking in on Clockshark looks like. So if you primarily want to use the website to clock in, you would go up to the time tab and click my time clock. From here, you can go ahead and you can choose what job, we'll do the demo job and task you want to be clocked on for. Let's go ahead, move me out of the way and choose the demo task that we just created. And then all you have to do is press clock in. And right there, you are instantly on the clock tracking time. Um, so this is wonderful, but a lot of people use Clockshark to clock in from the mobile app and not the desktop. So let's show you what happens when you clock in from the mobile app as well. Um, let's go ahead and clock out here. And I'll just press the clock out button. It'll show up a little confirmation thing and you just confirm it. And then from the mobile app on my phone, I can do the same thing. So I'm gonna open up the Clockshark mobile app. This works for both Android and iPhones. Um, and I'm gonna press clock in. I'm going to choose my job. And then I'm gonna choose my task. And now it noticed that I just clocked in from my phone and it started recording time here. 
Now, one of the cool things about the mobile app is it allows GPS tracking for your employees. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the Who's Working Now page up here at the top. And it will tell you, Jason just clocked in a few seconds ago, and it will show the location of where I clocked in from. So now you can see I'm here at the office and I'm clocked into the demo job. Um, it's really nice. It'll start showing you a GPS breadcrumb trail. What the ClockShark mobile app does is every 15 to 20 minutes, the ClockShark mobile app asks the mobile device for a GPS location. And then the mobile device sends back a GPS location and you start getting yourself a little breadcrumb trail of where your employee has been throughout their shift. Again, ClockShark does not have the ability to track someone when they are off the clock or when they are on a break. So this only happens when they are on the clock. Alrighty, so we've been clocked in for a little over a minute now. I want to go ahead and clock out from the mobile device in my hand, and you'll be able to see what happens in live time on the Who's Working Now page. Let's clock out. And then now I am no longer on the Who's Working Now because I'm off the clock. This will show the no GPS location found, which lets you know nobody is on the clock, no, no employees are clocked in. And then let's head over to the timesheets page so you can see what those time entries look like. To get to the timesheet page, you go to the time and then click view under timesheets. From here, you can see different people's shifts that have already happened. And we're going to go over to the demo job that I just clocked into. And we have the two events here. So this first one is from the website. We're going to move me out of the way again. Uh, this first one is clocking in from the website. You can hover your mouse over that little globe icon and you can see clocked in via web location unavailable. And again, that is because location is only available when somebody clocks in from the mobile app. You also can see a little alert that this was an unscheduled shift. Pretty self-explanatory. It just means that I was not scheduled for the shift that I clocked into. And then the second one, we've got the GPS locations here. So I can click on that. And we'll zoom in right where I was. It says high accuracy within four meters. So if I you know, zoom in on this, that means I was anywhere within this four meter circle. I want to back out so it's more of a normal view. Um, and then we have the two alerts here. So we have the same unscheduled shift one that we went over before. And we have the out of bounds alert here. This out of bounds alert means that I was not at the job site when I clocked in. So there's really useful information on these timesheet pages. It's nice, it allows you to see the different events within each, each one. Um, if you need to edit them, you can easily come over to this pencil icon and click the edit button. And you, know, you can remove the alerts if you know about them. You can keep them on there if you want to keep them. Say we actually need to change this to uh, 9.30 as the start sign time. We can change that and press save. It'll automatically update that. Um, and let's say these look good and you need to approve it, you can just come down and check the approve box right there. And now the shift is locked and it is approved. Um, if you need to unapprove it, you can just come over here and press unapprove and then you can edit the time again. So all of this is really great stuff. And the nice thing about it is you can run reports on this information as well. So let's go over to the reports page. Here we have all sorts of very useful reports, um, different things like just a quick breakdown, thoroughly detailed ones. If you use our pay rates, you can get you know labor costs with the pay rate reports. Uh, so there's a lot of great, great reports here. Let's check out the job details reports. I'm going to click here. And then we've got a few different things that we can choose from. We've got a date range. Let's just go ahead and say this week. Uh, if you want to filter only specific employees, you can just check that and just choose specific employees. We'll just keep that off, but it allows you to do that. If you want to filter specific jobs, say like we just want to see the demo job that we just put on, we could do that as well. We'll exit out of that and just include all jobs. And then let's go ahead and see that report. So I'm going to click view and I'm going to press PDF report portrait. And this is going to show the details for the um, for the jobs that have been worked on this week. So we've got the demo job here, the employee, the task they did, the start time, the end time. If there was a break that they took, it would show the start and end time of the break as well as the duration of that break. 
and it's going to total it all for you. There were some other jobs that we put in here before. So we got the gardening job. It looks like Jason and Cooper both worked the gardening job for a total of eight hours and one minute. And we have the office job. It looks like Kevin and Vaughn worked that office job. They both worked um, eight hour shifts for a total of 16 hours. So a lot of great things you can do there with the reports. And with all that said, a lot of people use ClockShark not only for their time tracking and scheduling purposes, but they also like to use it to make their payroll life easier. We have all sorts of integrations you can use with ClockShark. So let's go check that out. You can go to the admin tab and click on integrations. And here you can see the uh, payroll apps that we integrate with. We've got QuickBooks, both QuickBooks desktop and online, Sage 100, ADP, Gusto, and so on and so forth. Um, and it's really easy to get set up uh, for any of these integrations. It allows you to instantly send your time from the timesheet page over to that payroll service. And on top of that, ClockShark has wonderful integration specialists that you can book an appointment with to make sure that your integration, let's say with QuickBooks, is set up in the way that you need it to be so that you can easily export your time from ClockShark over to QuickBooks and that way you can process payroll. Your meeting with the integration specialist does not charge cost anything extra. It is included with your subscription and you can even get it set up during the free trial if you'd like. Um, but it is a wonderful feed. It is a wonderful thing here that we offer. Um, I highly recommend getting in touch with our integration specialist. It's really easy to do from our website. You can just come to this chat icon, start a new chat, type in here, say, I want to set up an integration meeting and uh, press send. One of our uh, customer support representatives will get in contact with you right away and they will get you set up with our integration specialist so that you can get rolling. Well, thank you so much for watching this product demo of ClockShark. I hope that you found this helpful and have a wonderful rest of your day.